but is something Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Roger Staubach, Cam Newton, and Walter Jones all have in common? I'll give it a second. Maybe comment your guess below. Okay, I'll give you the answer now. They all play junior college football. No one dreams of playing Juco ball, nor does anyone hope they have to go down the Juco route. But the Juco system is a crucial part of the college game, and in today's video, we will be explaining the NJCAA. Over the past few weeks, you guys have loved my videos on the difference between Division 1, Division 2, and Division 3 football, as well as my video talking about the NAIA. In those videos, you guys constantly requested a video on the NJCAA. Now, take out your notebooks and your favorite pen, and let's go back to school and take a look at the history of the NJCAA. Back in 1937, there was a movement to form a unique sports association that was dedicated to the United States two-year colleges when several track and field coaches met in Fresno, California. In 1938, the National Collegiate Athletic Association, aka the NCAA, rejected a petition from 13 two-year colleges that would have allowed for their teams and athletes to compete at the NCAA Track and Field Championship. In the spring of 1938, those 13 colleges gathered in Fresno, California again to organize and form an association that would promote and supervise a national athletic program that was focused on junior and community colleges. On May 14, 1938, the first constitution of the National Junior College Athletic Association was accepted by its charter members, and the organization held its first national championship event a year later in May 1939. During World War II, the NJCAA would suspend all sanctioned activities, and in 1945, Compton College hosts the first Western States basketball, which led to people talking about bringing back the NJCAA. In 1946, the NJCAA resumed with their track and field championship, which was held in Phoenix, and discussions began about the association expanding to include football, basketball, and swimming. In 1954, Hins Junior College would win the first NJCAA National Football Championship. It wasn't until 1958 when the NJCAA would host their first national championship game for football, which was played at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. That game was won by Boise Junior College, which is now known as Boise State, beating Tyler Junior College 22-0. In 1971, Former Eastern Arizona defensive lineman John Mitchell became the first African American to play football at Alabama. The following season, Mitchell became the Crimson Tide's first African American co-captain and became the first African American assistant coach. The following year, in 2012, the NJCAA began to implement the Football Computer Rankings (FCR) system to add a subjective component to its football polls. Most recently, Hutchinson's Community College won the national championship in 2021. Butler Community College and Northeastern Oklahoma A&M College are tied for the most national championships with six each. And Eastern Mississippi Community College, which was the subject of season one of Last Chance U on Netflix, has five national titles. The next set I'm going to share actually surprised me. Although there are thousands of junior and community colleges that play in the NJCAA, most schools don't sponsor football as there are only 65 current JUCO programs across seven divisions and a couple independents according to SB Nation as of 2018. The talent pool across JUCO football is not spread out evenly, as through 2017, Eastern Mississippi Community College had won four of the six titles, while Blinn College in Texas, where Cam Newton played, and Butler College in Kansas won another nine combined championships between 1995 and 2017. While other community colleges are horrible, there is not a standardized scheduling, but most schools play between 9 and 11 games a year. A lot of the schools according to SB Nation go 1 and 10 or 2 and 8, and the quality of play at the worst JUCOs is worse than the nation's top high schools. As of 2018, Mississippi led the way with 14 NJCAA schools, followed by Minnesota with 10, Kansas with 8, Arizona with 7, Texas and New York with 6, Iowa with 3, North Dakota with 2, and Arkansas, Georgia, Florida, Illinois, New York, New Mexico, North Carolina, Oklahoma, and Utah all having won. You may be saying in the comment section below, but Johnny, where are the California JUCOs? 
Well, they play in their own classification of football under different rules. How does recruiting work in the NJCAA? Well, some conferences have scrapped the scholarships and roster limits altogether according to SB Nation. There is no dead period when it comes to recruiting. Jason Brown, the head coach at Independence Community College, the team Netflix followed around in season three and four of Last Chance U, explains to SB Nation, football recruiting in junior college never ends. That's our blood life. When a tackle gets kicked out of Florida State on July 30th, we need to go pick him up. We have to show we are go-getters that have their ear to the ground and turn over rocks. You always want to bring in the best player and you want to bring them in 30 deep if you can. I believe competition breeds winning culture. It eliminates a lot of the kids doing foolish things too because now you can cut player A and player B is just as good. That's why we bring in so many numbers and that's why we recruit the nation. We recruit until day one of the season and we recruit all season long for next year's class. Every year there are several big time FBS prospects that either come from the JUCO ranks or go to play in the JUCO ranks due to a multitude of reasons. Up until recently, when a player at one FBS school transferred to another FBS school, a lot of the times the player would need to sit out a year. If a transferring player doesn't want to do that or they don't have any offers, they may drop down to the JUCO level. SB Nation writes, the NCAA rulebook lets players avoid sitting out a year if they A, spend at least one full-time semester or quarter at a JUCO, and B, maintain at least a 2.5 GPA. As long as the players met standard eligibility requirements out of high school, he can use JUCO as a detour and then quickly head back to the Division I ranks. On the other side of things, some players may not have any other option but to take the JUCO route. It's a place for the players who don't qualify academically out of high school, the players who get booted off their team for disciplinary reasons, or the players who were overlooked by recruits in high school. You don't go to JUCO college because you want to go. You go because you have to. Jason Brown told SB Nation, it's an 18th month school. We don't have an alma mater. Don't have a fight song. This is not a four year institution. Malik Henry, who starred in season three and four of Last Chance U, even told the Netflix cameras he didn't want to be there. The JUCO game is not glamorous, but it provides an extra opportunity for players. Although the JUCO system is a crucial part of the college football system, it may be in trouble. All seven junior college programs in Arizona were shut down in controversial decisions that could lead to courtroom battles, according to Sports Illustrated back in 2019. There's a dwindling of state support and a lack of alumni donations that have led to the tightening of budgets, which were already extremely tight. This has led to schools needing to consider to eliminate their most expensive sport. Ross Dellinger of Sports Illustrated wrote back in 2019, the problem goes beyond money. The revamped transfer process, the strict 25-man signing limit at the FBS level, and the NCAA's academic standards for transfers complicate JUCO football's place in the world of college football. The constant fight to reverse perception of JUCOs is tougher than ever, leaders say, and it's been made worse by the most significant exposure the sport has received in decades. The critically acclaimed Netflix series Last Chance U, a hard knocks-like peek behind the curtain at a JUCO program. Barton Simmons told SI, fewer junior colleges means there are fewer prospects and fewer opportunities. JUCOs are the net that catch the rest of the world, the guys who didn't start playing until their senior year, or the player no one recruited because of his academics, or the quarterback who gained 50 pounds and moved to the offensive tackle. Those are stories that are given life in the junior college ranks. Every junior college that disappears is losing an opportunity of a kid who could have otherwise played in the NFL. At least 27 players who were drafted in the 2017 and 2018 NFL drafts had played JUCO football at some point. The Big 12, Pac-12, and SEC signed 80% of the junior college players who joined Power 5 teams. The Big 12 signed a total of 203 players over a five-year span compared to the ACC's 65 players signed. The JUCO football game is a game you should care about because it is so important for college and NFL football as a whole. Do you support a JUCO program? Let me know in the comment section below. If not, who is your favorite Juco football player ever? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my video on the three NCAA divisions as well as the NAIA right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.